watercolour enthusiasts. Ever wondered how you can get cool and groovy effects from watercolour paints? Great! I made this video just for you! I find it a really exciting medium and so versatile too. Doesn't matter if you're painting really big or really tiny, realistic or completely abstract. You can get some really brilliant effects just by tweaking your technique or using products that you've got lying around your house. My name is Jules and I make videos on drawing, planning and publishing children's books. So join the gang if that's the kind of thing that makes your heart flutter. I've been making picture books for nearly a decade now and I swing between using watercolour, mixed media and digital colour. Each has its pros and cons but today we are just focusing on watercolour. So what will you need? Maybe some of the things that you already have hanging around your house. Some salt, cling film or saran wrap or just some thin plastic, a straw, a water sprayer, maybe some surgical spirit or rubbing alcohol. But don't use your best watercolour paints. This is just really for experimenting. So if you've got some cheap ones, that's perfect to use for this. I've marked my watercolour paper out into 12 grids because we're going to have a look at 12 different things. And the first one I'm going to look at is just a wet paintbrush onto dry paper. That's with a round brush and then perhaps if I was going to use a brush like this which is actually at the moment dry so I'm just going to pick up some of that pinky magenta colour that I was using. You can just make those little dry brush marks straight onto dry paper. So that's without overloading my brush. Next is doing a flat wash. So again I'm going to pick up some of that magenta colour and this would be just sweeping it across one, one colour taking out that space And the next is, number three, is a graded wash. So for this you're going to need to wet your paper. That's just water. And then we're going to pick up some of that colour. And this time it's going to be quite a lot of pigment at the top. and then ease off as you go down towards the bottom of that bit of paper and then this is just water. So you've got saturation of colour at the top but it gets a lot paler as it goes down towards the bottom of your area. Number four is using a splatter. So you can either do this with a very wet paintbrush and using your finger as a barrier or get yourself an old toothbrush with plenty of pigment on and paint. You can paint it directly onto the toothbrush if you want. And then using your thumb very slowly rub it along that tooth those toothbrush and you get a really good splatter effect number five is using salt so I've got here some very coarse grain salt and I've got fine grain salt and we'll see what the difference is. So first of all I'm going to put down some colour, it's quite wet because you do need it to be, you need quite a bit of pigment and you need it to be quite wet. 
and then you just literally pour your salt on. That's the coarse grain and then that's the fine. And what it does is it soaks up some of that uh, water and pigment and as it dries the pigment tends to collect underneath so you get little areas of marks. This isn't an instant technique because you do need to leave it to dry before you remove the salt so we'll leave that one as it is for now. Number six is using a masking fluid so this one actually comes in uh, with a sort of pen like end to it and this one I just got in my local art shop so it comes out looking a bit like Tipex and it's but it's blue so you can draw or write with it And this is really useful for if you are doing something like sea and you want or clouds and you want some white areas to re remain but you don't want to have to draw around it. Now this needs to be left to dry so we'll leave that for the time being and I'll come back to it with the paint. Next up is what we call wet in wet so that's wet paper and this is just water and then I'm going to drop some colour onto it and this is going to be quite a saturated colour let's pick up some more of that purple it makes these lovely diffused colours And then you can go back into it again with some more colour and add to it. Number eight is putting water into wet that's already there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the colour straight onto dry paper and then before it dries I'm going to drop some water onto it which is just off my brush Another thing you can do with this technique is using a water spray bottle, you can just spray water onto it. Now the last four, this one is going to be just using a straw. So I'm just putting some of the colour straight onto dry paper, making sure it's quite liberally wet and then using my straw, this is a bamboo straw, I'm just going to blow it. Whilst we're thinking about adding things, this time we're going to use surgical spirit or it's sometimes known as rubbing alcohol. This is the one I bought and it's the sort of stuff that you use when you've had your ears pierced to keep the piercings nice and clean. So this is just in one of those kids medicine container dropper things. I'm just going to drop it on, just one drop, see what happens. Wow! Awesome. This is a bit like tie-dyeing. 
you've ever done that, tie dyeing a t-shirt. So clearly the pigment does not like the surgical spirit, so it is moving away from it, but leaving that little mark in the middle. This next one is good for if you're doing sky. This is removing some of the paint. So imagine that this is your sky that you've just painted without the little pink blob there. And for this you're gonna need either a bit of kitchen roll or a little bit of sponge. I've got some kitchen paper. And I'm just going to, before that dries, I'm going to make it into a sort of bluntish end, like that, and I'm just going to take off some of that. And you can make your kitchen paper into a good shape for what you want. And there you've removed some of that paint. And it won't, the colour won't bleed back into it, because it's... Now that bit is fairly dry. And then the last one is great. I used to do this with my children when they were little. It's using cling film or saran wrap. Now I don't buy cling film any longer because it's really bad for the environment. But if you happen to have any knocking around, then it's quite a good little trick that you can do. I have got some very thin polystyrene polythene bag that I had for some building work so I'm going to see if this works in the same sort of way so nice wet paper and I'm going to drop a couple of different colors in I'm going to do some blue in one corner and then I'm going to do some of the purple down here and a bit of the cerise over in here. And then you want to scrunch up your cling film or your wrap a little bit, just place it on the top like that. And what happens is the, the parts that are in contact with the paper, uh, the, the pigment doesn't settle there, but it will settle in the little gaps that you've left and it creates a really nice effect, but you have to leave it to dry. So we'll come back to this when it's all dry and then we can have a look at what happened to the salty area and what's happened to the cling film bit. This has dried overnight now, so it's all very, very dry. The salt is dry and particularly this um, masking fluid area is dry. So I've just got some of the purpley pinky paint that I've been using and I'm just gonna paint over the top. And you can see that where the masking tape, masking fluid, sorry, has dried, it's unable to get to that bit of paper. So once this paint has dried, you'll be able to peel it off and see what it looks like. Let's see what it has revealed. So you can just pick it off but it's probably easier to use a cloth and just rub it. <sighs> so you end up with this, these white areas that you can use really well for things like sky and sea. So if we have a look back at the salt one again, which is over here, the large lumps of salt have actually, the large lumps have actually dried off quite well and you can just get those off with the back of the toothbrush. The small grains have really dried on and stuck down to the paper. So I'm gonna use my smudge stick just to start to remove that top layer of crusty salt and you can see it's left um, a sort of mottled effect. <sighs> More 
more of a mottled effect on the small grains and more bitty and blobby on the large grains. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. And that covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating your book, and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go. My question is, which one are you going to have a go with? Having inexpensive paint can be quite freeing, so don't worry if you've picked up a fairly inexpensive set, because you don't have to be sparing with it. And don't stop at what I've looked at here. Go and see what you've got lying around in your larder or your fridge. Maybe use some lemon juice or vinegar or onion juice. See what it does. If you're new to self-publishing, then make sure you look out for next week's video, how to register your book. I'm off to knit myself an octopus for winter, so I'll see you next time. Nanu nanu!